Hey guys, this is Sal. Today we're going to be talking about Scientific Workplace. This program is the best program for writing math documents. It can even do calculations for you. The one problem with this program is that it is not free. The full-fledged program costs $638.95. But if you're a student, you're in luck. You'll get a discount and it's only $228.95. But believe me, it's worth every penny. You can download a free trial, but it lasts only 30 days. Okay, so once you have the program, have it registered and opened and everything, you'll see all this, except I have opened all the toolbars. If you want to do that, you just go into View and Toolbars and select everything. If you don't want them all open, you don't have to, but it helps when you're writing to have everything open. It's just easier access. Um, all these ones on the bottom, this first one is all symbols you can use. This first button here is all lowercase Greek letters. The second one is all uppercase Greek letters. This one here is binary operations, just all these. Um, this one's binary relations. Here we have negated relations. This is a bunch of arrows. Here we have miscellaneous symbols, all these things. This one is special delimiters. Uh, we've got some Latin here, and some more Latin, and then just general punctuation. The next set of buttons we have are all these the math syntax which brings us to this button if it's a when you push it it turns into an M and when you it says toggle between math and text right now it's on math right now it's on text so when we type with here we type with text but if we push it again it'll starts typing in math equations and when we type we'll go like X whatever we type it's red and computer will be able to do equations with it this way. Right here we have the fraction button. If we push it, it shows the fraction right here. We can type in the numerator. We push down, we can type in the denominator. Here we have the radical. And I was in the denominator, so we got there. If we push over, we'll get out of that. We can backspace it. Now we're out of the fraction. We can push the radical. We can change it to a sixth root. We can change this into 34 whatever we want to do and it'll type it for you here we have the superscript and the subscript key shortcuts for that if you hit control up it'll go superscript control down will be a subscript here we have the parentheses and square brackets but as you know those are on your keyboard we have the sum the integral and the unit name button now with this if you pick anything in here say we want volume you can cubic foot, cubic inch, cubic meter. Okay, we want cubic meter. If we insert that, it shows it right there, and it knows what it's working with. Say magnetic flux density. You can do all these. Tesla. Insert. It just does it like that. This button is for displaying a sequence of equations. If we push it, it shows up in the middle, and it's pretty much centered. I brought this in from some previous work that I did. As you can see, it lines up all the equal signs, actually. You can't really tell, but it does. If I was to go in here and type in more, say it's just suddenly became 6,700, what it does is it keeps all the equal signs lined up. So if you have something is equal to something is equal to something is equal to something, it'll keep it looking very neat for you. Okay, so after the display button is the big operations button. What it has is all these integrals and other various math symbols for uh, very complex operations. So if we use just the regular integral function and we put the limit positions above and below it after we insert it, if we put a superscript it's going to go put it right above there so say we want to go to 24 and we put a subscript from this is 1 to 24. Then we can type our equation doesn't really matter what it is We'll just say the function of x. And notice we're still in math mode. If we hit this, then we can type text again. The next button is the brackets button. You can see it has a whole bunch of them. Anytime you pick a left one, it'll give you the corresponding right one. But you can also change the right one separately if you so desire. This is the matrix button. If you hit that, you can show any kind of matrix you want and you can change the rows and columns to suit your specific desires. We hit that, it brings up the matrix. 
Now we'll fill it in with a couple numbers. And now that we have that, let's for fun put some brackets around it. We'll give it the hard brackets, just like that. And let's try some experimentation. If we say we want to put this to the third power, we can go up into compute and evaluate. And it actually gives us what this matrix to the third power is. And it's that. And that would have taken quite some time to figure out. But with this, we just tell it to compute, and it'll figure it out. The next button is the math name button. It has a whole bunch of trigonometric values, and it goes into some uh, calculus ones, minimum, maximum, a whole bunch of stuff. We have the binomial button, label button in case you want to label something, and the decoration button if you want to put lines or brackets or anything over something that you typed. The slash triple buttons here are simply very commonly used symbols. We have pi, theta, infinity, element of or in, right arrow. We have the intersect and the union, cross divided by plus minus, small center circle. So that's just a very brief introduction to the program that is Scientific Workplace. It can do so much more, considering that the manuals that come with it total about two and a half inches thick. So I highly recommend this program, and that's all for me. Talk to you later.